to my mailbag number two. I get asked so many questions, as you can imagine. Basically, I'm here to answer the most common questions that I get put through to me. And as of now, I've got somewhere around 400 to 500 messages sitting here on my YouTube account. And it's pretty tough to get back to all of them, although I do try my best to do that. And yeah, 587, that's a lot. So uh, here we go, I'm gonna go through a few and take it from there. One of the new questions I get a lot is, is Dr. Rick a real doctor? And yeah, he is. He actually did my back surgery about a year ago. And um, he's been doing that sort of work for a long, long time. But actually before that, he used to play with Tommy Emmanuel. Now, if you YouTube him, you'll see he's one of the world's probably best acoustic guitar players. Um, Rick actually played electric blues with him for a while. So that's a bit of tip of the iceberg of Dr. Rick. He's a pretty accomplished uh, musician, really nice guy and, and professional. So he's a good dude to be around. Now another thing that I get asked a lot about is, uh, is the Vox AC15 loud enough for gigs? And it, that's one of those questions you can't really answer. Basically, it is loud enough if you're mic'd up and it is loud enough for a moderate to small room but it's definitely not loud enough if you're playing like heavy rock with a loud drummer. It's one of those things that just depends on the situation. I've used it many, many times without micing it up, but uh, there's been times at gigs where I wish I had a bit more volume, even with a pedal, and I had the amp on 10. So while they are loud, they're not extremely loud. And if you are after a louder amp, just get a 30 watt version. So it's pretty much the way to go. The AC15 tone is better than the AC30 tone, but the AC30 just has that big full vibe about it that the, the 15 doesn't get. So uh, yeah, that would be one of those things that uh, you have to weigh up whether you're gonna be micing your amp up at gigs or whether you're just gonna basically be putting it on the floor and using it like that. So there we go. I also get asked a lot what my favorite overdrive pedal is. If I was not gonna buy like a brand name, like an Ibanez Tube Screamer, what would I get? And the simple answer is, if you want something that does exactly the same thing, that sounds pretty much exactly the same, just go get a Delta Lab T01. They do the job, they're like 40 bucks in the US, maybe less. And um, I bought two of them over the years and they've been great. So like, why wouldn't you buy that over an Ibanez, I don't know. They're green, they have the same tonality. Check them out, they're really, really good. The next option is if you play, say, a humbucker guitar, you may wanna go for one of those uh, Baiyang or Biang tone fancier pedals. They're really, really good. They got the selectable switch on them as well, so you can get more tops or, or whatever you're out of those. Is it better than the Delta Lab? It, it kind of is in some ways, because you do have more flexibility, but if you just want you know, a simple to use pedal with no options, the Delta Lab's the way to go. So that's your call and it's also a price thing as well. So check that out. I also get a lot of questions about the Motu 8 Pre, which I've covered like a couple of times in different videos. And I always get asked the same kind of questions with that. Um, yes, it does have eight mic or line inputs. Both mic and line is in the same spot. So you get to choose which one you want to use. It doesn't have eight outputs, so it only has stereo outputs on the back, as in a left channel out, a right channel out, and it also has headphone jack. And they're really good. You can daisy chain them with ADAT, which is digital optical cables. So yeah, check them out. Another question about the Vox, I've just got another one right here, is where are they made? And Vox stopped making amps in England. A, because they're too expensive, and B, because they're too expensive, you know, there's no other way to put it. And are they reliable amps, these Chinese ones? Yes, they've been awesome amps, like I've had no problems with either one of my two, AC15 or the uh, AC30. So they're both great. I can't recommend them enough for, you know, getting great tone. They sound awesome, they're reliable. They do the job. If they were breaking down all the time, I would have had it fixed and had it sold, but the fact is, not even a tube's gone on them yet. They've been really, really good and I've had them both in live situations so many times. I actually used the AC30 on my last album. So, 
they're great. Funny enough, a couple of my PV Bandit videos are still number one on YouTube, which is pretty cool. So thanks to everyone who looks at those. And I've also uh, get some questions about the latest model, like the new one that I demoed. And that was thanks to my friend Neil. The speaker in it is a PV brand speaker. So uh, I think it, they're called a Blue Marvel. They're a PV brand. The amp is made in China nowadays. Back in the old days, the bandits were made in the US, but they haven't been made in the US for quite some time. But they've been great. I've had three of the red stripe ones. So, I mean, ton tonally, they're awesome. And I didn't like buy them and break them or anything. I actually bought them because they're really good and I got a great price on them. And they are loud. That's the other question I get. Are they loud enough for gigs? Absolutely. It was my main gigging amp for a long, long time. I'm actually gonna put a video together about all the different amps I had and the progression in tone and you know just see what people think so um yeah the pv bandits are good and yeah they're loud they're like 80 watts here's another question i get uh, when one of my videos actually had one of those power soak attenuator things sitting on top of one of my amps i, I can't remember what, what video it was on but basically i have a lot of people ask me about those things and the one that i had i actually got it off ebay it was like i don't know 10 bucks of 15 bucks from the US or England or somewhere, I can't remember. And all it was, it looked like a little matchbox with a one of those Fender volume controls on the top. And what that allowed you to do was you run it through your effects loop and then you can crank your clean channel all the way up and then use this thing as like a master volume. Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't great. It did the job, but some people say it puts a lot of electronics resistance in certain parts of your amp that can make it basically fail. So I didn't stop using it for that reason. I, I really just stopped using it because it didn't sound that good. So that was my experience with them. So you can buy like proper attenuators, but I've never had any experience with them. So I apologize, I, I can't help you. And here's one for you. It's updated as of today. Um, I always get asked like, what's my favorite overdrive pedal? Um, the problem with that question is it really depends on not only the guitar you're playing, but the amp, the music, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and who you're playing with as well. You might need something that cuts the mix a little better with some people or certain amps. You might need a bit of low mids. It's just one of those things. The most versatile one, hands down, right as of now, is the Rocket Pedals Blue Note. That thing is just so good. It is really, really good. And um, believe it or not, I'm really digging the Boss OD3. I used it last night with my uh, Les Paul or Tokai Les Paul. It sounded awesome. It was great. It doesn't have that humped mids, which I really like with um, humbuckers. It sounded awesome. The Plimsoll is still one of my favorites. It's just a great pedal. And um, it's funny going back through some of Brian's pedals. Like, I really dig the Blues Driver as well. I think that's a, a killer. And the Signa Driver is growing on me very, very quickly. I think uh, that's gonna be one of those pedals that uh, will keep going through my mind until uh, one day I'll probably pull the trigger on it, so. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good. I'd say they're probably my favorites right now that, of the ones that I own. And out of the ones that I don't own, I'd have to say that the um, the Blues Driver is killer. But yeah, the Blue Note, out of the ones I've, I own or have used, that's my favorite right now. I love it. So it's really good. Here's another question I get. What do you prefer, the PV Delta Blues or, you know, a Fender amp? And the answer I give people, which isn't the answer they want to hear, is I like them both. I think the EL84 tubes in the PV give me a certain type of inspiration playing and a certain type of sound, whereas the Fender is Fender sound. So you can't, you can't beat the Fender sound in some aspects, but the PV sounds really, really cool too. It's got that thick low mids thing that uh, the Fender amps don't have whereas the Fender has that nice low end and lush sort of highs and awesome reverb. They don't have a lot of thick mids and that's where the PV Delta Blues, especially the 15 inch version, has it over the Fender. But not to say it's better because it isn't. It's um, just different 
I think if I had to pick one, right now, as of today, I take the Fender Amp. The 65 Deluxe Reverb is the way to go. But the Delta sounds way more gritty and dirty, and that is such a cool thing to have too. It's due to the tubes, but the speaker that's in there gives that amp a really, sort of like a really interesting vibe that just suits blues. The reverb in there is not great, and we all know I've had a million problems with the reverb with my last PV, but at least the amp now is working, and it sounds good, so I like them both. That's why, luckily, I, I'm, I own both right now, and I am cutting down my collection a little bit now that I've done as much uh, video footage as I would have liked to have done and played with them enough to know which ones I want to keep. So I'm keeping the Delta and the Fender and the AC-15. Here's one I get all the time. Can a pedal or a guitar or an amp make me sound like such and such? No, it can't. You could pretty much grab Eric Clapton's guitar and his amp and not sound like Eric Clapton. It's up to the player. You can capture a vibe and that's pretty important. So there's certain amps that will give you a kind of similar sound to these guys, but they're pros and they've got people that mod their amps and they put different speakers in and all that kind of stuff. Unless you've, you're in that sort of niche with a company, you're not gonna be able to capture that sound exactly. They do it for a reason, it's next to impossible. Check out some of the rig rundowns on like John Mayer or Kenny Wayne Shepherd, and then you'll realize like these guys are running like five amplifiers and a hundred pedals and it's just out of reach of a lot of people. Not only that, they're killer players. They're really, really good. So if you want to sound like someone else, learn the songs back to front, capture some feel and um, basically get some gear that will allow you to get that kind of sound. But asking me if I think you're going to get a deep purple sound when you buy a PV Bandit you know, it's not a question that I can answer. All I can really advise you on is my experience with things and I don't play that kind of music to begin with or, you know, or if someone asks me, and that's all for the mailbag this time around. It's been a while since I've done this, it's probably been about a year or six months or somewhere in between. So thanks for watching. If you do have any more questions, you can post them below or yeah, or post them on my videos and I'll just answer. Thanks all, cheers, see ya.